Hey, welcome back to the lecture. So now let's begin with the driver development task. The I square C peripherals of your microcontroller. You have to open the reference manual to identify how many I2C peripherals are really present in your microcontroller. In STM32F407X microcontroller, so you can see that we have three I2C peripherals. All the three I2C peripherals are actually hanging on APB1 bus. All right. Check your reference manual. So you may be having only two or more than three. All right. Now let's move forward. So this is a block diagram of the I2C peripheral. Now this block diagram is almost same in all the ST's microcontroller. And even the diagram is similar across different uh, microcontroller vendors. Here you can see that we are mainly interested in uh, SDA and SCL pins of the I2C peripherals. It also supports SMBA protocol, but that protocol is not uh, discussed in this course. And uh, so that's why you can see that there are two pins which goes out of this peripheral. One is SDA and another one is SCL. Both are actually preceded by the noise filter, which is used to remove some glitches or some spikes, etc. So it is to smoothen the SDA and SCL signals. And as expected, so you can see that it, since it's a half duplex communication, so you see only one data register. So you don't see different buffers for transmission as well as reception. So there is only one data register. And that data register is connected to the data shift register as expected. So the firmware or your code is going to write data into the data register and the data register contents, then it will get copied into the shift register. And then from that data will be transmitted to the external world. And whenever the data is received from the external world, it comes all the way to the shift register and when one complete byte is received the data will be copied into the data register and from there you can read the data all right and this i2c peripheral you can use in either master mode or in slave mode and when you configure your i2c peripheral in slave mode then the slave address you have to store in this register that is own address register so this is the address register which is applicable only when the device is in slave mode. So this is used to store the slave address. All right. And after that, you can see that the SCL pin is actually connected to the clock control block. And the clock control block is actually controlled by the register that is called as CCR, clock control register. Now you have to configure the clock control register in order to produce different frequencies on the serial clock pin. And later we will go and explore the clock control register. And as expected, it also has a couple of control registers. So actually it has two control registers in order to configure various parameters of the I2C peripheral. And also it has two status registers, SR1 and SR2. So all these things we are going to explore as we make a progress. All right, so that's about the block diagram. And from the next lecture onwards, let's uh, understand the API requirements and other configurable items which we need to create. And I'll see you in the next lecture.